Yeah. People now find themselves watching, watching TV shows, shows at 7 p.m. instead of whatever I used to do at 7 p.m., you know? So it's been fun, you know? Don't worry, things will get back to normal about 47. I told my youngest son that his eyes got. Yeah. That's pretty much what everybody's told me. You know, the joke is like, you know. Call the order. Welcome to the October 8th regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. The BZA members are volunteers and receive no compensation. We are appointed by the City Commission for staggered three-year terms. Under state statutes, the BZA hears three types of appeals. Dimensional or non-use variances, including sign variances. The appellant must show practical difficulty complying with the dimensional requirements of the ordinance. We require four affirmative votes. We have a full board, so four out of seven, and all of our four appeals tonight are dimensional. We also hear about use variances and appeals or interpretations or rulings of the building official or other boards regarding any provision of the zoning ordinance, but we do not have those in front of us tonight. Our procedure is all comments are to be addressed to the chair myself. Please wait to be recognized. The city staff will make a presentation regarding the appeal, 
and take questions from the board members. The appellant is then invited to present the case. Only one person can speak on behalf of any appeal. Uh, we can make exceptions um, at my discretion for an architect or an engineer if we have questions regarding the appeal. The members of the public are then invited to come forward, identify themselves by Zoom or in person, and provide um, comments to the board about the particular appeal. The hearing is then closed and motions from the board are entertained and acted upon. In all cases, this is not a popularity contest. Granting or denying a variance is based substantially on the appellate meeting their burden of proof. Can we please call the roll? Eric Margaroth? Here. Jason Canvasser? Here. Kevin Hart? Here. Richard Lilly? Here. John Miller? Here. Ron Reddy? Here. Pierre Yeldo? Here. Carl Kona? Donald Rogers? Here. So as I said, we have a full board. Uh, tonight we have four appeals. Do we have someone here for 24-23 appeal for 2136 West Lincoln? Yes. Thank you. Do we have someone here for 2424 appeal, 695 East 14 Mile? Yes. Thank you. Do we have someone here for appeal number 2425 for 303 Greenwood? Yes. Thank you. And do we have someone here for 2426, which is 1155 East Lincoln? group uh, online I don't see anyone here so I just see a gentleman in the lower right not the same name though well if that, someone is here for um, appeal for 1155 East Lincoln please let me know if not we'll keep you on the agenda um, until your case comes forward I do want to say that uh, two of the board members myself and mr. Miller were brought back in front of the City Commission for reappointment we were both reappointed for three years, so um, congratulations, Mr. Miller. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Morgan. You. I see there's one correspondence on um, the garage door case. Do we have any other correspondence? Very good. Gentlemen, before you have the minutes of the previous regularly scheduled meeting, I know Mr. Canvasser has a comment. Does anyone else have a comment about the minutes? Mr. Uh, yeah, a correction. On page 9, uh, the motion, the second paragraph says, Mr. Canvasser moved to, it should say deny. There's an uh, extra word approved there. So approved should be stricken from that sentence. Let me get to that. These, we don't have page numbers on here. Which appeal is that? Oh, I'm sorry. It is appeal 3420, I'm sorry, 2421 for 1407 Ruffner. It's number 5. It's like the middle paragraph. It's the second paragraph that's highlighted in bold. Mr. Canvas removed to approve deny. All right, I'm on 24-21, second paragraph. Yeah, where it says Mr. Canvas removed. Second um, bolded paragraph. Yeah, I got that. Which, okay. Which yep. one do you want to strike? Uh, or, strike the word approve. We, yeah, did, okay. we denied that request. Okay. Based on that amendment to the uh, minutes, do we have any other changes? Hearing none, can we get a motion to approve as amended? Motion Mr. Lilly? Do we have a second? Second. Oh, Mr. Yaldo? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Minutes are approved. Approved and amended, that is. The first case tonight is case number 24-23 regarding 2136 West Lincoln. And Mr. Zilke will present. Jeff Zilke here to present case 24-23. Property known as 2138 West Lincoln requests a falling variance to install a single car garage door on an attached garage. Chapter 126, Article 4, Section 4.75A2, the zoning ordinance, requires that garage doors on attached garages which are facing the street may not exceed 9 feet in width. The proposed is 17 feet, therefore an 8-foot variance is being requested. The applicant is seeking to install a single-car garage door on an existing non-conforming home that was constructed in 1947. And here's the... I added this. It wasn't part of your package. I added it so you kind of get a visual of 
the house and and here is the floor plan here's the garage it's actually facing Woodley and with the garage doors there are currently two single garage doors there are single doors smaller doors they're looking to do one larger garage door and that's why they're here in front of you tonight very good can you go back to that image sure the Im yeah can you zoom in a little bit so is that center framing going to be taken out and that arch going to be redesigned is that how that's going to work yes correct uh, any other questions for mr zucky seeing none your turn yeah, you can just come up, tell us your name, your address, and tell us why you believe a variance is warranted. Okay, um, I'm Rolf Quisling. This is my wife, Anne. Anne asked me if she could make the presentation, and this concerns her really more than anything. Okay. So, if you could just tell us your address, even though I think we know it, but just in case. Um, this. Sir? It really is. Can you just say your address out loud? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It's 2136. West Lincoln. West Lincoln. I heard, I heard the name coming. Very good. 136. West Lincoln Street. So go ahead. To Birmingham. Perfect. Yes. So you were saying? So um, we need this garage door because we're 81 years old and we have a real problem with the existing doors. They're very narrow. And um, it's, once we get in the garage, we don't have a lot of room to get out of the car. So it's a lot easier for us if we have the one big door we can drive in the middle, open both doors all the way wide and get out, um, especially for my wife. And she finds it very angst-producing to try to wh whittle that car into that garage door. It's, to her, it's a very annoying and... <laughs> I guess um, angst-producing uh, events. Um, I, I want to, I don't want to bore you, but I want to get you, give you the background kind of of this. Um, we're 81, we want to live independently as long as we can, and this is part of that program for us. Um, we have a house in Florida. For the last 10 years, we had a house in Florida and a house in Michigan. A house in Florida may be gone as we speak, I don't know. Um, I'm not kidding. But in any event, um, we had the house in Florida to get away from the winter. We have the house in Michigan to get close to my son and his family. So that house is a good sized house. It's in um, uh, north of 26 Mile, uh, quite a bit of distance from my son, and also very large and has three flights of stairs. So it got to the point we maintain our own house. We do our own shopping, our own cooking, all that kind of thing. And it got to the point where that house was just too big for us. So we went looking for the one we have now. And the point of that house was to get us on one floor so we could walk everywhere without having to do stairs and without having a big house. This is a much smaller house. The other one's about 6,000 feet. This one's about 2,500. So it's a lot easier for us to maintain. We thought when we looked at this house that that would be part of the remodeling project was just to put that door on and that would let us do the ingress egress easy for us and without the angst um, we found out that that wasn't possible even though when we look around in the neighborhood um, those are common to right across the street from us two houses with double wide doors go up and down the street they're all over the place so I don't you know we don't understand the value of this ordinance or how it applies to us. But we know it's important to us at our age, trying to keep an independence, that this be allowed for us to get an easy way in and out. Um, we've already bought the door. I mean, our, our architect, don't blame him. He looked across the street and saw the, the double doors. So he had no idea there was a, 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 a ordinance, yeah. yeah. Um, in any event, um, we now own the garage door, but we don't have permission to put it up. So that's what we're seeking. Um, and my wife has a kind of a special interest in that, in the sense that she gets, the, you know, the hardest job going in and out of that thing. 
that I should have mentioned that the doors are actually so close to the wall on one side. There's two of them. See the one on the right? They look like they're even, but if you go in on the one on the right, you have less than 15 inches. You cannot open the passenger side door of the car. You cannot get out. Uh, the other one will let you open the door, but not fully. So for old guys like me and old girls like her, that makes it really unnecessarily difficult to get out of the car. It's a little bit of a struggle. Um, so when I look at the ordinance, I don't understand what it's for, what it does. Does anybody know? Anybody have any idea what that? Why don't you finish your presentation, then I'll, I'll okay. try to answer the question. All right. Well, I guess that's all I have to say, unless you have questions. I have a few questions, and then, yes. I, you know, I believe the intent of the ordinance, and I didn't create the ordinance, I believe it's a decorative thing. So it only applies to garages that face the road or face the street, because I have a single door, but you can't see my garage from the street, and it's perceived to be a decorative thing. And people that remodel their houses that have a double door are actually forced to go to a single door. You already meet the current code. You're asking to go back to a, you know something that's no longer allowed. A couple questions. So do you only drive one car, or do you drive yeah, two? Yeah, just one car, yeah. So ideally, you just want to park in the middle, just go in so the middle. you have that full middle opening. Middle, yes, yes. The other question is, and maybe your builder can answer this, but I'll ask you, did you explore two nine-foot doors? Excuse me? Did you explore two nine-foot doors? Uh, no, we have not. We purchased the door we have. That's a 17-foot door, I think. I'm only asking because two nine-foot doors would be allowed, and although I think it does look tight, it doesn't really matter. They won't fit. They won't fit. They won't fit. We, we measured they won't fit. Okay. And then my other question was, um, I assume you don't turn into this garage. You simply go straight in and straight out. Is that correct? Yes. Because usually when people complain, because you know, I'm in the building industry, when people complain about a eight-foot door being tight, it's usually because they're trying to make a turn, and they can't make that turn. So the idea that you're backing straight in and straight out usually is less of an issue. So I'm just trying to understand, yeah. you know. It's more of an issue for my wife than for me. The actual clearance is not wide. If you don't bring the mirrors in, you can't make it. Are you driving a large SUV, can I no, assume? No, it's a F-Pace Jaguar. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Size. Other questions for the appellant? Ms. Miller. Yeah. I, I just have something from my builder just to show me. He has a, like, it's 50 like 50, pictures 54 pictures of single of doors just by me driving 10 minutes around the Yeah, it, it just doesn't, if those are old homes that are existing non-conforming, it doesn't apply to the fact that this home is conforming. You're asking to go to a non-conforming condition. But I, yeah, I don't need yeah. the images. It's okay. Anything new would have to have had doors that are not, you know, eight or nine and be single, or 10 even. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. Um, you stated that you just really have a single car that you use yes um, and that you really don't you, you really uh, have a tight situation with even opening the doors of the car um, and obviously our zoning uh, wants to keep the doors at, at a nine foot maximum did you explore having a single nine foot door in the center of the garage, which would give you room to open the doors, you could get your car in and out, and you would abide by the ordinance. Um, no, I, I thought that would look strange, though. I, I mean, I, I think now it would look strange. I, I did not explore that. No, I don't think I've ever seen. Sir, you can't you can't testify or, or comment from okay. the audience, but thank you. So the answer is no. You didn't explore that. No. Any other questions? Please. Ready. This is probably more for Mr. Zilke, but I just want to make sure I understand something here. Why is this existing non-conforming? I'm sorry, you may have covered this. The garage actually sits forward because there's another part of it. The garage is actually forward of the actually front elevation, so it's existing non-conforming. So it's a setback. It has nothing to do with the current doors. Correct. Is that correct? Thank you. Any other questions for the appellant? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hurt. Sorry. Yes, um, <clears throat> the, uh, you might have said this earlier, but I missed it. Are the existing doors currently eight feet right now? Yes. They're eight feet? It, they're, the, they're eight feet, but the opening isn't actually eight feet. The doors then have um, molding on the side. Sure. And then the support in the middle is probably yeah, about so a foot. Yeah, so you lose yeah. about, I don't know, two and two and a half inches on each side, so it gets small. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you. In the audience or 
online, anyone not specifically affiliated with this appeal that has comments about this appeal? I see someone connecting. See that, Bruce? Yeah, I just submitted a, a Carl. So I'll ask one more time. For this particular appeal for 2136 West Lincoln, does anybody in the audience or in the public have a comment about this appeal? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Board members. I, no, I have one other question oh, for, the, for the city. I just um, The address here is on Lincoln. Correct. But the garage face is Woodley. Correct. Okay. I just didn't want to get turned around there. Sure. Okay. And and the, the, the situation that we're considering faces Woodley. Correct. It's garage doors is facing the street. Okay. You know it's yeah, on yeah, the second. Sure. Woodley is, is So you can come up and say something if you'd like to. Go ahead. I should mention that I'm not gonna be familiar with it. Woodley is a dead end street with no sidewalks on either side. It is not quite Lincoln. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Zoki? Seeing none, board members. Statements, comments, motions? Um, Please. I guess a motion um, for 2136 West Lincoln. Um, the motion would be to deny. Um, I believe the ordinance is in place to minimize what were known as garage houses at the time, houses that had garages forward of the main front of the house. And that was put in place to uh, um, uh, have a smaller scale to the garages and, and also to promote front porches on the house. So that was a package that was passed together. Um, that related to the to the front yards of homes and the situation of garages also required garages to be I believe five feet back from the face front face of house this was for for new construction and um, on Woodley which is the street the garage faces um, many of the homes were built in the 60s or 60s ranches and those garages which don't conform um, are either uh, forward or in line with the front face of the house and those are the kind of homes that that the ordinance was put in place to uh, to minimize or rule out as houses were replaced or improved and that they should relate to the new ordinance also there's two newer homes run directly uh, adjacent to, to this house I believe on Woodley that's a newer home that has a double garage and one directly across the street it's the older homes on the street that really maintain the old um, front-facing large garage doors. Um, so I believe that um, granting the, uh, the variance will not result in substantial justice to the neighborhood, um, and it will be contrary to the spirit and purpose of the zoning ordinance in this case. And I don't believe it will result in any unnecessary hardship either because I think, um, as I have stated and, and given their concerns, that this could be solved with a single um, nine-foot wide garage door, um, which would accommodate the single car and functionally accommodate the needs that they were concerned of. Um, so I don't believe that there's any special conditions applicable to this property that would uh, um, that would show a need for a, for a zoning uh, variance so for those reasons again I would uh, I would uh, um, deny the uh, the request we have a motion to deny do we have a second I'll second it mr. chairman thank you mr. ready so we have a second do we have any discussion I'd like to say <coughs> excuse me um, I'll support this motion. I've, I've kind of been weighing it in my head a little bit. Um, first of all, sir, I want to commend you. That was a very eloquent, very well put together presentation, and, and I'm certainly sympathetic to you and your your wife's issue. Um, but unfortunately, sympathy isn't what we have to look at here. We have a specific test we have to 
adhere to, um, and we look at the conditions of the property. Um, we've we've had a number of issues where people have something personal that they can't use a property, and they want a, you know, a stairs or a garage or whatever it is. And, and unfortunately, at some point, somebody else is going to buy this, and they may not have those same uh, conditions. So, um, for the reasons Mr. Miller stated, I'll support the motion. But I, I just I wanted to say we we are sympathetic. At least I'm sympathetic. I would I think it's safe to say that we're sympathetic to what you're issues are, but that's not really something that we are allowed to take into consideration when we're reviewing these requests. I'll also comment, so I'll support the motion. I also have empathy in this situation, and I totally understand why you want to accomplish what you want to accomplish, and I'm guessing that your particular vehicle probably has very wide, longer doors than normal, which may be a challenge for getting them open and closed, and maybe not, maybe they're they were average. The, the challenge is, is that many people come in front of us that want to build new garages and they want to have single doors and we tell them no. And many people build new houses and they want single large doors and we tell them no. So if we aren't consistent with our statement and nothing particular about your property um, as our ordinance requires will help us justify the need for a variance, we have to be consistent with the ordinance because we don't create the ordinances. We're just here to enforce them. So. If the city commission chooses to review this and, and create other rules, then we will enforce those rules. But here, we can't reverse the ordinance based on, on the criteria that was provided. So for that reason, I'll support the motion. Anyone else? We have a motion to deny. Can we call the roll, please? John Miller? Yes. Ron Reddy? Yes. Mary Aldo? Yes. Jason Canvasser? Yes. Kevin Hart? Yes. Richard Lilly? Yes. Eric Morgana? Yes. Sorry. What? Our uh, next case is 2424 for 695 East 14 Mile. Mr. Zilke will present. Jeff Zilke here to present case 24-24, property known as 695 East 14 Mile. Request the following variances to construct the second floor addition to an existing non-conforming home. Chapter 126, Article 2, Section 2.0. 10.2 of the zoning ordinance requires that no side yard shall be less than five feet. The existing and proposed is 3.90 feet on the east side, therefore a variance of 1.1 feet is being requested. Variance B, Chapter 126, Article 2, Section 2.10.2 of the zoning ordinance requires that the minimum total side yard setbacks are 14 feet or 25% a lot width, whichever is larger. The required is 14 feet, the existing is 11.30 feet, therefore a variance of 2.70 feet is being requested. In variance C, Chapter 126, Article 4, Section 4.74C of the Zoning Ordinance requires that the minimum distance between principal residential buildings on adjacent lots shall be 14 feet or 25% a lot width, whichever is larger. The required is 14 feet, the existing and proposed is 12.30 feet, Therefore, a variance of 1.7 feet is being requested on the east side. The applicant is seeking uh, to construct the second floor addition on the existing non-conforming home that, that was constructed in 1953. Um, let me zoom in here a little bit. It be a little hard to see. On the east side, it's 3.7. It's required to be 5, so there's variance A. Um, the distance, be the total side yard setbacks combine the two 7.6 on one side, 3.7. That's where we're getting the variance B uh, for the variance of 2.70 feet. And then the distance between structures is the 12.30 feet for the 1.7 foot being requested on the east side. Very good. So, Mr. Zoki, sounds like we're saying that we have a request for three A, B, and C variances due to an existing non conforming structure that this proposed second floor is not exacerbating that. Nonconformity, so the house is going to have this need 
whether we build on top of it or not. Is that accurate? Correct. And they're not, nothing they're doing on the second floor is, is adding more nonconformity to the property. No, I let the appellant speak. They're doing more of a modern look to the house, which was a little bungalow. They're taking off the front of the house, which you've probably seen. Uh, the front porch is actually being pulled in to conform with the ordinance, which is being new, being added to the front of it. It's just the existing house going up, stacking on top. Very good. Other questions? Mr. Miller? Is this house currently under construction? Uh, they got a little ahead of themselves. <laughs> um, That's a loaded question because I was there. But. Right. <laughs> uh, they jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, and when we found out, he held off until he can get in front of you guys tonight. Okay. But they submitted for a permit? and. Yeah. Uh, I was in for a permit, applied for the BZA. It was like... Uh, a misunderstanding, which I'll let the appellant speak of it, and <coughs> they got a little ahead of themselves. So. Look forward to it. Any other questions for Mr. Zephyr? Seeing none. Good evening. Eric Kiter, 44045 Grass, representing John Kalai, the owner of the property. Uh, me being the architect, uh, yes, we're asking for nonconformity on an existing structure. We're not expanding it. We're building <coughs> on top of the existing first story. It is kind of a, an existing bungalow salt box where there is an existing parcel second floor, but we're kind of expanding on the front, which is kind of a big vaulted uh, uh, studio ceiling, so we're adding square footage to the existing box uh, and creating a new modern kind of mid-century look. And of course, just like uh, Mr. Silky said, that we are, you know, putting a uh, uh, covered front porch on it, but we are meeting those requirements by, you know, going in. So we're asking for those side yard setbacks. And yes, the owner did kind of jump the gun. Unfortunately, there is again, like Jeff said, was a miscommunication on the permit and some approvals. And but so we apologize for that, and the owner will apologize too. So related to this second floor. Was there any exploration with your client to reduce the uh, second floor um, nonconformity by pulling the house in, a, a modern design where you didn't carry the house over the existing footprint? Well, uh, if we pulled it in, that would, uh, uh, it's really the, the four walls are the bearing points of the whole house. Uh, so with kind of the vault that already as is, that pulling it in, uh, it would, uh, we have an existing staircase on the left. We weren't touching the staircase or kind of the rear of the house, just kind of reconfiguring it. So that portion is staying. So we couldn't really bring it in because it's already there. So it's really that front portion is brand new that we're going from bearing to point the bearing point. So if we did bring it in, the whole staircase and part of the existing house would have to be demoed, which we weren't planning on doing. Very good. Other questions for the appellant? Seeing none. Thank you. Oh, sorry. No, no, I was going to make a motion. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, Thank you, sir. Yeah, just real quick to see. Anybody in the audience that didn't start building a little early uh, that has any comments about this? <laughs> you can't comment on your own case now. Um, anybody in the audience or online that has any particular comments about this appeal? Seeing no public comment, we'll close public comment. Looks like Mr. Ritt, Mr. Rowe. Uh, Oh, it's Mr. Lilliam. You switched spots. We had to switch spots. My yeah, right. computer was frozen. Please, go ahead. You had a motion? So, Mr. Chairman, yes, I'd like to make a motion uh, with regards to appeal 24-24, uh, the property known as 695 East 14 Mile in Birmingham. I would move to approve variants A, B, and C. We've seen this uh, type of situation before. I think it's unreasonable to expect. Uh, the owner not to be able to build a second story and uh, try and move walls in uh, on a pre-existing non-conforming structure that would not line up with the load-bearing walls. Uh, I think little enforcement of this particular chapter of the zoning would result in unnecessary hardship, and I don't think granting of the variance would be uh, contrary to the spirit and purpose of the zoning ordinance simply because he should be able to build a second story on his home, and uh, it fits in an already pre-existing non-conforming home built in 1953. So for those reasons, I'd move to approve A, B, and C and tie it to the plans. Second. Very good. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any discussion? Mr. Hart. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the appellant has done a very good job of presenting a, uh, a good solution to this project. The uh, 
the outer dimensions are we only have like less than 28 feet of width it's very difficult to come up with uh, a good plan and I think uh, this is a very reasonable request and um, I, I will be supporting the motion very good any other comments seeing none we have a motion to approve can we call the roll Ron ready yes Jason Kavisser yes Kevin Hart yes Richard Lilly yes John Miller yes Eric Morganwell Yes. Very well. Yes. Congratulations. You have your variance. Thank you, guys. Yep. And I want to say I'm sorry for that. I didn't know I needed the variance until after we got the survey done. And that's when all the problems created. Cause I, my billing permit was already in the process of being approved. And I thought it was approved because online it says approved. I talked to Jeff about that a couple times and he explained. And we, you don't have to apologize yeah. to us. Just <laughs> the billing <laughs> 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 Our next case is 303 Greenwood, and I think we have someone who has a uh, recusal. Mr. Chairman, if I could interrupt, um, I uh, would request a, a recusal in the next case. I have some involvement with the, uh, the appellant, and I uh, think it's best that I uh, bow out for this one. Very good. Anyone on the board have any issue with that recusal? Seeing none, please. Excuse me. Get room. Yeah. We have our alternate coming on stage for the first time, Mr. Rogers. Yes. Welcome to the board. There you go. Hi. Want to give us a quick overview, your name, where you live, and how excited you are to be here? Yes, yes. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, Don Rogers, uh, 2409 Buckingham Avenue. Um, Actually, earlier this year, I got involved in the Senior Rec Center Ad Hoc Committee and having so much fun with that. And uh, Bruce suggested with my building background, I, I worked in the uh, commercial building industry for 42 years. And uh, so I thought, ah, I'd like to serve on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Very good. Welcome so, to the board. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. Go ahead. Excuse me. Jeff Zilke here to present case 24-25, property known as 303 Greenwood. Request a volume variance to construct a detached garage. Chapter 126, Article 2, Section 2.08.1 of the Zoning Ordinance requires that the maximum 30% lot coverage for residential lots, uh, the required 30% required lot coverage, that's... Uh, so a lot, you're going to have 30% lot coverage for structures. Uh, the required is 30%. The, the required 30% on this property is 1,452 square feet. The proposed is 32.7%, which is 1,584 square feet. Therefore, a variance of 2.70%, which is 132 square feet, is being requested. Uh, the applicant is seeking to construct a new detached garage. The existing garage is actually not conforming closer to the property line, but they're getting reconstructed. It's actually shrinking down a little bit, so it's mitigating the square footage a little bit, still being a little bit over of the 2.7% of the 132 square feet for the overall 30% that's permitted. Mr. Zilke, can you just review for the board and for the public the exceptions for the staircase and anything else that's in this particular design so we can understand this 132 square feet, what's impacting the overage, and it's not simply the one car bay. So our ordinance says with the house being an R2, you get 550 square feet for an accessory structure. Okay. Um, overall, 30% lot coverage counts the detached garage plus the house, which it's putting it over. So our ordinance also says if you do an interior staircase, it gives you 75 square feet of freebie, so it would reduce the square footage. The staircase is in there, and it still puts it over the 2.7% of the 132 square feet. So the garage, the staircase was put in to kind of reduce it a little bit more, even from what it was. The original garage, I don't believe, had a staircase in it. They're trying to shrink it down and mitigate it and move it over to conform with the, the setbacks. 
and still being a little bit over, that's why they're here in front of you tonight. So really the garage does not exceed the accessory structure. This is simply the lot can't accommodate the square footage of the garage because of lot coverage. Correct. The existing house right. kind of puts it over. It kind of gives a, you know, it's the moving map game. Like I always say, it's like, where do you put? And the garage itself, the detached garage, does conform with the square footage. Um, it's just the overall combined square footage. And what about this little porch detail? Um, or is that not a porch detail? Whatever's going on on this front left corner. So that whole square footage with the overhang does still count for the, the square footage. So it's all been figured in within. And the lot the coverage, footage. right? And if they had no flat work in that area and that was grass, would that reduce the lot coverage? If the overhang wasn't there, it would could reduce it, but then I think it will throw in another stipulation that Eve would be too tall. Hmm. Okay. Um, so the Eve would be too what? Tall. Too tall. Tall. Okay. And if they did, and again, I'm just throwing out some ideas. If they did a spiral staircase, which clearly wouldn't function as well as this staircase, and reduce the square footage, they, you know, because it really isn't the second floor of the garage that's impacting it. It's simply the sh the s footprint of the garage, right? The second floor is irrelevant. Correct. Because it's overall footprint of it. Right. Um, could you get a little bit more square footage? I think either way, it might still kind of be affected to some point. Right. Um, take out 132 square feet and you've got right. with the garage. Yeah, you need like 10 by 13 out to do it. Very good. Other questions for? Please, Mr. Miller. Yeah. Um, this is a situation, it seems, of, you know, of mitigating over what was there previously. Is there anything that shows graphically the difference between what was there and what's proposed here? And the position of it, too. Yeah. Okay, the site plan. The site plan show that. The other one because it showed because this is tighter, this is yeah. less than the three feet to the property line, which it needs it's required to be three feet. Um, it looks like it was like a one car with a um, a car port. Oh, So the dotted line here is showing the existing garage that's being done. It's being pulled oh, over see. three feet, right. Right. and it's actually a little bit further out. They shrunk it down, got the staircase in it. Hopefully that kind of answers your question. I mean, if that's to some kind of scale, it almost looks like it was shifted over but got a little bit wider. Yeah. Maybe the appellant can tell us that. Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I think the... Uh, if you look at the, the ordinance and the available square footage of that 1452 less the current home, 1264, leaves you 188 square feet. That's the hardship. You can't even build a one-car garage with that. So uh, I think uh, the plans that have been developed uh, are yeah, trying to mitigate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just questions right yeah, now. We'll, yeah. We can have a discussion after. Gotcha. Yeah. Very good. Any other questions for Mr. Zilke? Very good. So please just tell us your name, your address, and then why you believe a variance is reasonable. Hi, my Hi. name is Eve Hadley, and my address is 462 Pilgrim in Birmingham. Um, I'm representing 303 Greenwood, Jennifer Hamilton. Thank you for your review of this variance request. Jennifer Hamilton family is planning to replace a badly deteriorated garage at her home on Greenwood. The existing garage is a non-conforming two-car um, structure that encroaches onto the north side yard setback by two feet. The existing north side fence is less than a one foot from the garage wall, creating a dangerous condition with animals and people getting wedged in and trapped within that tight area. It's uh, horrific. She, um, she actually... Want to pass that around, maybe? Yes. She, 
her dog got stuck and she couldn't find it for a long time. <laughs> was crying. Yeah. So the garage. So that there are two non, you know, huge non-compliances. Oh. That that setback is one. The garage structure is also in a failing condition with rotted stud walls and foundation failures in several locations. So the existing garage also puts the property in a non-conforming lot coverage of 35 percent, which is currently 5 percent over the allowable 30 percent coverage. Um, my numbers are didn't uh, combine the house and the garage; it was just the overall. So we're the current <laughs> not it, it's yeah, 5 percent like right over. So Jennifer Hamilton plans to replace the existing two-car 432 square foot garage with a new one car, 308 square foot garage that would be placed outside of the three foot north side yard setback. So the setback would be accomplished in full compliance. The requirements for va the variance are not self-created. The, the current det detached garage is non-conforming in its current state. The new garage will bring the property within the setback requirements and will, will reduce the current lot coverage down by 2.3%. So we're requesting um, the new variance of 2.7% over. Allowing the variances will not adversely affect neighboring properties and strict compliance to the ordinance will cause an undue hardship with an unusable garage configuration. The new garage structure was designed to provide a modest and practical solution to a necessary component of the residence. It also reflects a mitigation with a, with a coverage reduction. We respectfully request your approval for a lot coverage variance of 2.7 percent. Mr. Zilke, do you have the measurements for the patio on the deck and what impact or percentage of the lot or, or some, you know, Perspective on how much because it sounds like oh, you know okay. the lot can't accommodate this garage But there's also a ton of patio driveway Exterior decks and how is that impacting? The lack of lot coverage or available lot coverage for this structure. You know what I'm saying? Right, so with the deck In our ordinance says you can go out 15 feet behind the house just like a front porch We project 10 feet doesn't count for lot coverage. So there's a little bit of you know it's there, but it doesn't exist, so to speak. Um, but does this go on beyond that? 18 feet, according to the plans. Right. So you can have you got to maintain 40 percent open space, and this is right at the 40 percent. So I mean, it doesn't. There's a lot of sites that don't doesn't appear to be, but yes, it's with the calculations, it's right at 40 percent. Um, so the deck doesn't count, but the patio does because there's a deck and a patio so driveways pavers counts for the impervious portion so i always look at it, it's 30 percent impervious so driveways pavers structures house detached garage structures are the other 30 percent and then you gotta maintain 40 percent open space so with this there's 40 percent open space without the reduction of this garage in the current state it would have uh, reduced that 40%, so it didn't meet the open space. By reducing that down, it did bring that part in conformity, uh, meeting the 40% open space and then shrinking the, the garage down. Um, it still the, goes over the lot coverage because of the house and the structure itself. And I can't tell if this paver patio, because it just says exterior pavers, is the size of the envelope, which could be like 24 by 20, which is over 400 feet. So. It, and if that was reduced, would that give them the coverage they need to make the garage bigger? No, because structures is so it's still structure, structure not just lot and then coverage. impervious is you know another avenue of it. So the paver doesn't impact lot coverage, correct? But the driveway does. Not the lot coverage; it's open space. Open space. It, it, it'll impact open space either way. Structures impervious is all open space, so you got to maintain forty percent. Structures itself, it's anything that takes volume of shape on the ground, so a house, detached garage. Um, that raised that deck going past that 15 feet, there's some of that that's in it. Um, but being behind the house, that's part of the ordinance in the open space, you can project 15 feet. So if it was like reduced and cut in the corner, then there'd be some more structure, so it's kind of a moving math game. And right. a lot of so if that deck 
lost three feet by 18 feet, it's not enough to make the garage bigger. No. All right, very good. Other questions? Yeah. yeah, with the, with the garage in a the existing garage in a deteriorated condition, would they be allowed to just repair that existing garage in place? I Hold on, we have just a question. I I mean, I'll lean the Bruce a little bit. seventy percent. I yeah, I, I think the garage is at the point now where it would exceed the replacement cost would exceed 75 percent it would have to be it couldn't be rebuilt unless it was in compliance with the ordinance okay so a just in terms of safety of the situation so to re repair that garage is not feasible or not allowable or questionable at this point questionable questionable okay thank you any other questions for please uh, Bruce sorry to go back to that but what what is the general rules that is, if, if the replacement or if the repair cost exceeds 75 percent of value then it's considered of the, a, of the, it, of the total cash value of the structure of the structure yeah, yeah. then a then conformity would be required Correct. right okay any questions for the appellant specifically? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Any, anybody in the audience or online that's not specifically affiliated with this appeal that would like to comment on this particular appeal? Seeing none, close public comment. Board members. Miller, you feel obligated, it looks like. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for yeah, he's other looking options. For to take, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's looking yeah. for a pinch hitter. Yeah. The, um, this situation, I, I, I'm, I'm for, where are we at? 303 Greenwood. Um, move to approve. Um, since the existing garage could possibly be repaired in place, and it is non-conforming both in its location and its size, um, I think that the mitigation here and the amount of mitigation um, would, would uh, do certainly substantial justice to the property owner um, and to the general public given the location of that existing garage compared to the new one. Um, so I think the elimination of that uh, side setback violation and the, the uh, uh, mitigation by about 125 square feet or, or two plus percent of the lot coverage um, is, uh, um, is, a, is, a, is a reasonable situation for, for, the, for the new construction to be um, um, really adhering to the spirit and purpose of the ordinance in terms of public health, safety, and welfare. Um, and I think because of the conditions of that existing garage, the ordinance, if strictly ap applied, is, uh, would unreasonably prevent the property owner from, uh, from uh, dealing with this garage situation. And, uh, and again, I, I believe that the, uh, the amount of mitigation and in both instances of setback and, uh, and lot coverage is, uh, is a reason to, uh, to approve this appeal. I would tie it to the plans as submitted. I have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second the motion. Very good. We have a second. Any discussion? Mr. Rogers, do you want to make a comment about your thoughts you were saying? Just as I uh, mentioned earlier, if the ordinance was strictly enforced, uh, you'd only be able to build a 188-square-foot garage, if I do the math right, which is really not practical. So I think uh, the fact that they've come up with a, a, a design that meets the current setback requirements and mitigates the current overage, uh, it's a very modest one-car garage. I think the spirit of... Uh, the uh, uh, the ordinance is being adhered to here. 
and I would support the motion. So I'll support the motion. You know, we have had many garage variance requests over the past year, or every every year, but it seems like we had many recently. Um, in this particular case, um, this appeal involves removing a nonconformity in terms of the placement of the garage. It's a request for a garage that is only a one-car garage, which is probably a minimal size garage to function. Although there's a second floor and a staircase, neither of those things are really impacting the 30% that um, is really in front of us today. So it, it's not um, a factor. And because of the reduction of the previous size garage, if we did deny this, likely the existing garage would remain, which means that there would be a larger nonconformity and it would be in a nonconforming position. So I think for justice to the community and justice to the appellant, this variance makes sense to me. So for that reason, I'll support it. Any other comments? Seeing none, we have a motion to approve. Can we please call the roll? John Millen? Yes. Peter Yalba? Yes. Juan Rogers? Yes. Jason Kamazer? Yes. Richard Lilly? Yes. Eric Morgan? Yes. Ron Reddy? Yes. Congratulations, you and your client have uh, their variance. We call, uh, as Mr. Rogers wants to hang around, can we call our board member here. back in? I'll, I'll sit back. <laughs> yeah, I can get him. Thank you. I'll see you guys next month. Absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Mine never came, mine never came back. I froze last Last case. <laughs> last case or last? I mean, last, sorry, last. last. <laughs> when physical doors. Yep, sorry. First, looks like a few of us are having some frozen computer issues, just so you know. No, it's it might unfroze. It, it was frozen for half that appeal, though. It's fine, it's fine, though. How about the size of the packer service? Can you introduce that, please? That's nuts. It's only six or seven pages. Oh, what's up? Okay. No, it's just the second month in a row that we've had tech issues. Why don't we? Our next case, 24-26 for 1155 East Lincoln. And I, and by the way, you weren't here for attendance, but you're here for that case, correct? Very good. Thank you. Go ahead. Jeff Zilke here to present case 24-26, property known as 1155 East Lincoln. Request the following variance to construct the second floor and a rear addition to the existing nonconforming home. Chapter 126, Article 2, Section 2.10.2 .2 of the Zoning Ordinance requires that no side yard setback should be less than 5 feet. The existing and proposed is 4.5 feet on the east side, therefore a variance of 0.5 foot is being requested. Variance B, Chapter 126, Article 2, Section 2.10.2 .2 of the Zoning Ordinance requires that a minimum total side yard setbacks are 14 feet or 25% a lot width, whichever is larger. The required is 14 feet. The existing and proposed is 11.92 feet. Therefore, a variance of 2.08 feet is being requested. And variant C, Chapter 126, Article 4, Section 4.31A1 of the Zoning Ordinance requires that a minimum of 65% of front open space in a single family district shall be free of paved surfaces. The required, is, the required 65% is 575.25 square feet. The existing and proposed is 49.9%, which is 433 square feet. Therefore, a variance is 16.10%, which is 142.25 square feet of pavement in the required front yard. So, Mr. Zoki has the previous, not the last case, but the case before. We have um, three cases of nonconformity and it sounds like the existing and proposed are the same, so they're not adding to the nonconformity. Is that correct? That is correct. But in case of the circle drive, or we'll call it a partial circle drive, so is that being repaired or completely ripped out and replaced? What's the story with the front flat work? It, it, it is in kind of disrepair. Speaking with the appellant, they want to pull it out and put it back in because the driveway to the west side is actually adjoining driveway um, and I can let the appellant speak more further into that 
uh, the ease to get in egress and ingress egress and to get in and out of the driveway. Uh, they're looking to keep the same kind of driveway configuration as it sits, but they want to repair it. But it's more or less a redo with the driveway in the condition it is. Is the appellant aware that the existing nonconformities for the structure are not a demo and rebuild? They're just building above, whereas this is the demoing of a nonconformity and then asking to rebuild it as a nonconformity? Correct. Very good. Any other questions for Mr. Zilke? Mr. Miller? Yeah, the. Uh... The way the driveway is used, um, is that driveway to the west, that's for the adjacent house. So is it kind of a, uh, uh, a as far as you know, a handshake agreement that they use that driveway as a turnaround, or? As far as I know, yes. I think you said the so, appellant would talk. Okay, so as far as as far as you know, though, there's not an easement, or I didn't. I didn't. The little bit that I looked, I did not see that there's an easement okay. documented requiring the, that uh, the driveway being shared connected like that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the city? Seeing none. Who's coming up to speak? If you could just state your name and your address, please. Raymond Shisha, R-A-Y, or 8, 1, 1155 East Lincoln, Raymond Shisha. Very good, thank you. Okay. And uh, we're, at, we're requesting for a variance to build up on the non-conforming. And the driveway, we got the house how it is. I'm not looking to break it down. I just, I think the city might have done it. I don't know who. They came and uh, smoothed it out with asphalt. We just put a layer of asphalt over it. If... I have to cut it off. I, right here, you can barely fit a car. It cuts off right here because the foot's, the house is two feet wider than every house in the neighborhood. It's kind of weird. So I can't pull the car in there. And pulling it here, her fence is like right next to me. So to be able to kind of make that left right here, it's, it makes it more comfortable for even one car. Two cars is pretty much impossible with this, but it can still kind of fit. Uh, as far as how it is, I'm not planning to change anything. I just want to resurface it and make it smoother because I'm making a new house. So. so describe to us how it kind of dies into the next street. So what's the story? It dies into your neighbor's driveway. What's the, what's the I got no understanding idea. there? You I don't got, know? I have no idea. I'm, I believe this is a commercial property. Mm. And uh, they're zoned commercially because it's a business they run out of there. And their entire backyard is uh, their parking lot. Because they have way over 70%, I think, or 30%. Uh, I have no idea what it is. They, I, I honestly never spoke to them. You know, they, uh, they actually so, put in a couple times. And no. Down. And uh, I said, that's fine. I asked them if the driver was one of the state benefits. I didn't have any comment on it. And I rarely use it to exit their driveway anyway. So, you know, basically, and it sounds like we have a, a discrepancy between resurfacing which to me is a repair versus ripping out and repouring the same driveway because repair is more of a different discussion, right? Then, because like he's over by 142 square feet, so 10 by 14, likely the driveway could be widened to be more functional and you could get rid of that hurt you hardly ever use and actually make it a more functional driveway without needing a variance. But if you rip out that entire driveway and then duplicate it, you're basically asking us to allow you to build a non-conforming driveway. So, Mr. Zuki, is your understanding that they're tearing it out and redoing it, or they're just resurfacing, and it, does that matter? I know there's talk about re-asphalting it, and I took it as whether you mill it down and cap it over, you're putting a new surface on it. I think there's a fine line there. You know, on a residential driveway, I, I, I don't think I've seen one milled and then resurfaced. They're usually tore out and... and Reinstalled. Right, if you mill it all the way down to yeah. great, right. And you said, who, who did you say put asphalt over it? You said before you bought the house, you think somebody else? No, recently. That wasn't us, right? As of recently, some the city, uh, somebody came and cut my tree. That was on my property. I don't know who. Uh, and they cut the part where it's falling, it, it was falling on the neighbors. Yeah, that part isn't in front of us, but the driveway's your private uh, property. The driveway, as they did that, the driveway's been uh, re-asphalted. Oh, I mean, sometimes if they come in because they, of some possibly. utility, 
they repair the area, but they didn't do the whole driveway. No, they just did it to where the... They patched an area. The, yeah, so I was planning to basically do the same thing as what they did. So the question is, do you want to withdraw this request to Can mill I? it all the way down and redo it? And you're just going to, you know, so seal coat it or do some version of seal coating? You're, you're, so you're giving me the idea of to cut it off and just give it some kind of... Spray. I'm not giving you an idea. I'm asking if you want us to, the board, to look at you asking to redo the driveway exactly as it currently is, which yeah. would be tearing it out and rebuilding it, which has come in front of us many, many times and in general has not gone well, but we'll listen to whatever you want. Or you we can just, We just want to resurface this. We're not planning that. I just did the same thing as in a property I have in Clarkson with a 100-foot driveway. They just literally go over the asphalt, I think maybe like a quarter inch kind of. You're not milling it down. You're not grinding not, up the base. Not, I, I don't think any concrete's going to gonna get out of there. If, unless, maybe if it's broken, I have to chip it out, but just kind of, I'm just planning to resurface it. I don't want to pull out the driveway. Because if, if I do have to pull the driveway out, like you said, the zoning wouldn't allow it for me to uh, be able to pull out from there. Or I think it would cut it off somewhere like right here. I don't have enough room to even park as it is already. Or get out, for that matter. And if I reverse from back here, I'm hitting the fence no matter what. You don't want to hit the fence. So, Mr. Johnson? Is that asphalt or concrete? As of current, it's concrete, but the, the, the job that the city did is asphalt. I believe the city did right. Point to where you say that the city right did work. On the approach. Oh, the okay. approach. Uh, uh, on oh, the yeah. approach. So there was some type of utility work or something like yes. that. And <clears throat> most of the drive approaches are asphalt. Yeah, so it's currently black asphalt, and the rest of the driveway is concrete. So I just want to. Is that temporary patch? Well, that's the approach is really the city property, so they can yeah. e get an easement there and they repair it. That's not uncommon. I think they're talking about right there. Well, originally, I wanted an easement with the neighbor to, to I wouldn't cut this whole thing out. If she would have just gave me, I believe it's a foot. I need on the, to the, to the right, because I can't pull in there, and her fence is there, and I think I need, I can't put a garage. I'm more than fine with putting a full driveway, cutting that out, and putting a garage stay back. I only got about seven feet, barely. Like oh, my winch, uh, my rear views barely don't hit, you know? I mean, if you don't plan, if, if your ideal scenario is not duplicating what's there, but using the amount of concrete you have left, which is a fairly generous amount, because all you're over is 132 feet, yeah. which is like 10 by 13, which is probably that chunk on the left, then you can withdraw this piece of it and get a landscape plan, show what the new driveway is, and as long as it's 132 square feet less than you're currently proposing, you don't need a variance. I mean, I, yeah, it looks a lot bigger on the site plan than it does in this image. Yeah, it's really small. I don't have much room to deal with. It's even hard to tell. And you can't really, you can't pour another coat, you can't pour another layer of concrete on concrete unless you use it a, as a base for asphalt. It's asphalt. I'm not gonna, it's gonna be asphalt. Yeah, it's strictly asphalt. asphalt that's getting done. You, you can do that over concrete, I think we can, yeah, right? Over deteriorated concrete? Is, is the driveway cracked up? Oh, cracked up. Yeah, it's pretty cracked up. <clears throat> stuff. Weeds. You, 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 He's putting it in You driveway. can't put asphalt over that. Those cracks are going to come right through that. Right. It's going to settle through and bleed through it. Yeah. Well, let's go with your three and let's see where it goes. But you're basically ripping out and putting in a new driveway to mimic what you currently have. Is there a dimension on there, Mr. Zoki, of the the width of the driveway in the center of the house? This looks so much bigger on this scale. Like, you have 25 feet setback, so that's got to be, what, is it 10 feet right there? Really? Yeah, that's, I'd say it's probably maybe 8 foot. You got a car. You got 7 and a half feet up here. Right. You're probably about 8 foot. Right. All right. Uh, any questions for the appellant, please? Yes, Mr. Turner. Yes, um, Mr. Shisha, the, uh, the, obviously there's not going to be a, a driveway on either side of the house, is that correct? There's not, not enough room for a full-size driveway to get access to the backyard, right? I tried talking to the neighbor. Yeah. She's not interested in... So you're not, there's no, there's nowhere for I, you to I park wish. a car in your backyard. Is there no detached uh, garage planned or... There's no, de there's no way to get Because there's back. no way to drive there's your no car. There's no way to get back there. And so this, uh, this apron would allow you to keep your car from being parked on Lincoln. Uh, well, 
the the weird part about it as well is the where my house is, the street parking kind of ends there. So it kind of ends right there, and then there'll be uh, that white line with the diagonal. So I, it's kind of hard for me to even have guests over regardless if I want somebody to come over. So you can't park in front of your house on Lincoln no. the, probably the last 30 feet? probably get towed. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Mr. Cameron. Yeah, I just explain to me what you mean by the fence. Is, is her fence on your... No, 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 I understand that. I see where the fence is. Is it on... Well, hold on a second. Let me ask my question. Is her, pro, is her fence on your property or you wanted to get her property so that you'd have more room and she just wouldn't sell I wanted you. her just to move her fence a foot over. This house is so weird. It's two feet wider than any house I've seen or done the measurements with Birmingham in. So it leaves me with, I think, 7.42. And what is it I need? I think eight and a half. Need yeah, ten. You need ten. Nine. Unless you're folding your mirrors but back. Is her, is her fence on her property or your My property? It's, it's on her. I, I do the survey. I believe it's on her property. Okay. Don't. Yeah, so she doesn't want to give you a foot of her property. I understand. Okay. <laughs> I don't get to redo her whole fence and buy her a new one. She does not want to. Well, that would also require you paving part of her property to, to get a car back there. Possibly. Okay. And would you say that um, backing out of your driveway, if you didn't have that circle right into Lincoln, might be a little bit challenging for you? I would say this, to, to pull in to where because the porch is. Because back in and go around that circle. No, you can't really go past the porch where the driveway is, and to pull in, it's pretty much like when we park sometimes, we're still, the back of the car is still on this side, on like the, covering the stair, uh, the sidewalk. Side 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 yeah. Very good. Other questions for the appellant? Please. Yeah, so you're renovating the existing house basically so you're you're leaving the the, the basement or the the foundation walls Obviously. where they are and, and building up so you didn't see an opportunity to move that wall over so you could that wall of your house over on the east side so you could get a car into the back I have to knock out part of the foundation and I just, structurally speaking, I don't think that would be, I could even do that without having to knock down the house. I thought of every possible, I've seen Jeff more times than he's probably liked. <laughs> you know, I can't really, it's a very particular kind of property. So I'm just trying to find a way where I could, it looks abandoned, it's been there for quite a while, make it just really nice, it's a corner house on the, on the road, I just wanted do what I can do without so, having to knock it So down. you feel you have a hardship in terms of the positioning of that existing house, which doesn't allow you to get a car adjacent to the house or into the backyard. Is that? There's potential if I was to ask the, the neighboring property to the right of me where it's commercially zoned, if I could, so they kind of broke down my fence. There's a fence there. And it's on the, on the side, you only have on four the, and a half feet? Way back there in the backyard. So they broke down my, so if you're asking me if there's a way I could get into my backyard, I mean, if I asked them, hey, can I pull in from where the parking lot is? Because their parking lot is right, yep, to the left of my backyard right there. They'd have to give you an easement. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to have an easement. And I'd have to have, yeah. that's the only possible right. way, I believe. Other than that, I and do have, I believe we have rendering images of what yes. the house could uh, look like. Well then, I assume that if there was a new owner there, they could change their mind, and you would be, you'd be locked out of your of your yard. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty. Hmm. I don't see this. Is it? No, this is. I, I do have one more question. Mr. Commissioner. Yeah, Mr. Miller, are you done? I didn't mean to cut you off if you weren't. I'm done. Okay. Um. There looks to be a strip of concrete that goes along the side of the house. I, I think that's just uh, like the um, the, re the rendering. I, I believe if you can, you, can you go over, I think, uh, one more page? Yeah, and I guess for the city, we're not considering that piece. That's not part of our analysis, right? No, it's only what's forward right of the here. house. Yeah. Okay. So the front of the house would... Yeah, that's what I was looking at. 
Did we send you a rendering of what the actual property would look like finished? I mean, it, it doesn't impact our decision today, but you may want to speak to a landscape architect just about whether or not some of the concrete that leads to the front of the house that you can't go next to the house yeah. may be useless and having a wider pad at the front of the house where you could just come in, turn in front of your house, and maybe, and again, however it can be maneuvered, but maybe that piece leading to your house when you're hanging into the drive, hanging into the sidewalk anyway, isn't functioning properly either. I don't know. I mean, I would love if I could leave this how it is and uh, just repatch it and bring the porch out and I don't, I don't or add more concrete. I mean, I would love to add Well, you're, you're at your limit, so the issue is can you even add what's there now? That's what's in front of us. So I'd rather just stay with the non conforming porch. All right. Any other Surfaces. questions for the appellant? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. In the audience, uh, someone who's not affiliated with this appeal or online that would like to comment up about this particular appeal. <coughs> Seeing none, board members, what's your thoughts? Anyone besides Mr. Miller? <laughs> right, go ahead, Mr. Renner. I've made a motion if you want to make a I was going to do the same thing. Um, Please, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, with respect to uh, appeal number 24-26, I would move to approve the uh, variance request, uh, variances A, B, and C uh, as requested and tied to the plans as submitted. Um, I believe the applicant has uh, made a great demonstration that uh, is clearly working with some really tough circumstances and uh, and that those circumstances, the the width of the existing house, the, the structure of the neighboring properties, how the driveways laid out uh, and needing to access a neighbor's property just to exit. Uh, there's several circumstances that are particular to the property and constitute special conditions. Uh, because of that, uh, I believe literal enforcement of the chapter of the zoning ordinance will result in unnecessary hardship and uh, allowing the petitioner to go forward with the plans would certainly be uh, not contrary to the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance, nor to public health, safety, and welfare. And uh, allowing the petitioner to go forward with the plans as submitted will result in substantial justice to the property owner, owners of the property, and the general public by allowing the petitioner to improve the aesthetic appeal of the property without uh, further encroaching on any of the neighbors and allowing the petitioner to, uh, to uh, simply gain access to and from the property without exacerbating the variance. So for that reason, I would support the, uh, the, the variance request. So we have a motion to approve A, B, and C. So we have a second from Mr. Hart. Second. Tied to the plans? Yeah. Tied to the plans. Tied to the plans. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Miller, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah. We talked about, yeah, adding a tie to the plans as submitted. Um, also, you know, having all that concrete in or, or asphalt in the front yard is a, is a difficult situation for us to approve. And I, I am going to support the, the motion, but I just would want to add that um, or urge you to, to really try to soften that with, with you have a new house, some new landscaping or something. So, so again, that the, uh, the negative impact of, of that paving is, is, is mitigated and, and softened through, through some uh, through some landscaping. I noticed the house next door has that nice picket fence and landscaping. You like to extend that sort of neighborhood look if you could. But uh, but I do support I do support the motion. Any other comments? I'll also support the motion. Um, the appellant uh, for A B for A and B he has an existing non-conforming home. He is adding a second floor and improving the house. He's staying within the existing boundaries of the current footprint. So he is not um, adding to the nonconformity and should have a right to improve his home as long as, even in a nonconforming home, as long as it um, doesn't exacerbate that. The driveway is tough because if, if this is in such disrepair that it needs to be replaced, we typically don't approve um, driveways that are larger than what is allowed for the 
um, front open space, but in this particular case, um, the house is wide on the lot. There's no way to get to the backyard. There is no garage. So um, it's proximity on Lincoln and the complexity of the house position and the width of the home and the narrowness of the lot, I believe that a variance in this case is warranted. So for that reason, I'll support the motion. We have a motion to approve. Can we please call the roll? Peter Yaldo? Yes. Kevin Hart? Yes. Richard Lilly? Yes. Don Miller? Yes. Eric Morganoff? Yes. Ron Reddy? Yes. I think I called everyone. No. I, I saw some vote. Jason Cameron, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Congratulations, you have your variance. Good luck. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, do we have any other business to discuss? We do not. Anybody in the public that would like to comment on something unrelated to the appeals we reviewed this evening? Seeing nothing online, nothing in the audience. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>